Welcome back everybody to C Sharp Tutorials for Beginners. This time we're going to do casting types, so let's just jump right in. If you haven't already, clean your code up to the template plus our read line and we'll get started. Okay, so as with most things, casting can get pretty complicated, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I just want you to know how it works and understand what it does and maybe a couple of alternatives to it. So there's two basic types of casting. The first type is called implicit casting, and that's when C Sharp can do it for you. The next type is explicit casting, which means you have to tell it what to do. So the first thing we need to do is create a couple of variables. So let's make an int called number one. Let's make it equal to 15. Then let's make a double, call it number two, and let's make it equal to 8.5. Now, starting with implicit casting, which C Sharp can do for you, it's important to note that the types have to be compatible for C Sharp to take action. So what that means is that a double has a certain amount of precision. A double can take care of an int. An int does not have the same precision as a double, so an int can't take care of a double. So if we're talking implicit casting, we could say double number three equals number one. That way our int would automatically be cast to this double here. What we can't do is make int number four and try to set it equal to our double number two because you cannot implicitly convert type double to an int. Now, to tell it what to do, if we wanted this to be an int, we could say parenthesis int close parenthesis. Now, as long as this is up against this variable here, this is called a typecast, and it will tell C Sharp to turn this into an int. Now, the consequences of this is that we will lose our precision. So, what is going to happen? 8.5 is now going to be 8. So we lost anything after this decimal place. So we can run this here and show this. But also it's worth noting that even if it was 8.9999999, it would still go to 8 because it doesn't round for you. It just drops the precision. So we'll cast it again, and it is still 8. So you have to be very careful when you use explicit typecasting. Typecasting can also be done in an expression. So right now, we're letting it typecast an int variable into a double variable. But say we wanted number 3 to equal number 1 plus number 2. Now we have 1 plus 2, int plus double. So what's happening is this evaluation here is automatically becoming typecast into this double, which is fine. So if we were to say int number five equals number two plus number three, again, this can't be automatically typecasted. So this whole thing here is a double and we would have to typecast the whole expression to an int and again whatever the result of this addition when we convert it to an int we would lose anything after the decimal place not every type can be cast either implicitly or explicitly to another type but a lot of times types can be converted using what is called a method now you've used method with right line and read line, and we'll go over those a little bit more in depth very soon. But for now, what we need to talk about are convert methods, because those are the most beginner-friendly ways to get from one type to the next. So if you type capital convert, period, you can see all of the convert methods available to you. Boolean, integer, double, all of those things. So Right here where we're explicitly casting our double to our int, we could use 
to int32 because it's a 32-bit int. Now, if we wanted to use a long like we talked before, it would be int64 because a long is also called a 64-bit int. And we would convert number two. And that would convert our double to an int. And we could set it just the same way like that. So this is doing the same thing as this. But we can also use these conversion methods to cast things that normally can't be cast. So say we had a string called text number five, and it was equal to the string representation of the number five. But now we wanted to turn this string into an int, so maybe we could do some math on it. So we could say int integer five equals convert dot to int 32 and then give it our text number five and that would turn this number from inside this variable into an integer these conversion methods come in very handy when taking user input from the console from a text box or reading values out of a database that's as far as i'm going to go with typecasting and conversion for now Next up, we're going to do some user input and maybe a coding challenge, so that should be fun. Thanks for watching, everybody. I do appreciate you. Until next time, as always, take care.